But as for Arwen the Fair, Lady of Imladris and of Lorien, even star of her people, she is of lineage greater than yours, and she has lived in the world already so long that, to her, you are but as a yearling shoot beside a young birch of many summers. She is too far above you, and so I think it may well seem to her. But even if it were not so, and her heart turned towards you, I should still be grieved because of the doom that is laid on us. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. I'm excited to be speaking about the life story of Arwen, the daughter of Elrond and the wife of Aragorn with you all today. Articles and videos that helped with the creation of today's video may be found in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Born to Elrond and Celebrian in 241 of the Third Age, Arwen, meaning Noble Maiden in Sindarin, who would also be named Undomio, meaning Even Star in Quenya, would become the fairest of the children of Iluvatar in the world of Middle-earth during the Third Age. In many ways, she resembled her great-great-grandmother Luthien, being slender and tall, dark of hair, gray of eyes, and graceful. She, like her twin brothers Eladon and Elrohir, was considered to be a half-elf, and thus had the choice of the half-elves before her. She inherited the elfstone named Elisar from her mother Celebrian, who got it from her grandmother Galadriel, and Arwen would bear this for a time before passing it back to her grandmother to be given to the one she would marry far later in her life. However, during her earlier years, during the many centuries of the Third Age, she dwelt in Imladris or Rivendell, but would often visit and live with her grandparents in Lothlorien when she was not living in Rivendell. For a majority of the Third Age, I imagine Arwen came to learn the lore of the world and her people, learning the songs and tales of the elves long since past. She became a dancer, she would also meet many of the Dúnedain, I'm sure, especially their later chieftains who would be raised in Rivendell for a time. However, during crises like the Angmar War, I'm sure that Lord Elrond made sure Arwen and Celebrian were in safe places, for unlike her brother Eladon and Elrohir, Arwen was not a warrior, but due to the many parallels between her and Luthien, as well as being the granddaughter of Galadriel, I'm sure Arwen retained some elven powers of her own. As the centuries went on, Arwen would come to understand the nature of the Elves, Middle-earth, and her place in it. In many ways, Arwen personifies the quintessential Elf of the Third Age, being fair and beautiful, yet retaining her own measure of sorrow regarding her fate and doom as well. For her own mother Celebrian would be assaulted by orcs and would leave these shores in 2510 of the Third Age. This was one of the first major sorrowful events that Arwen would go through, but certainly not the last. In some ways, she was absolutely unlike the other elves of the age, as she would come to make the choice of Luthien in the end. For though the choice of half-elves was not implemented during Luthien's time, she still died a mortal death, just as Arwen would eventually do in the end. However, before we reach that tragic part of her story, there's much more joy and happiness to speak of for this elf maiden. For a time, near the end of the Third Age, Arwen dwelt in Lothlorien, and during that time, the final chieftain of the Dúnedain, Aragorn II, son of Arathorn, would be fostered in Rivendell. After he came into early adulthood in 2952, Arwen happened to come back to Rivendell, and there she met Aragorn, who referred to her as Luthien. Arwen heard this young, brash man speak of his proud lineage, and she laughed merrily, saying that they were actually kin from afar, and had not met before, as Arwen was in Lothlorien. But she was in fact not Luthien, and was rather the daughter of Elrond. At this point, Arwen likely pitied and liked this young man, but had not the same reaction as he, did not love him. For Aragorn fell in love with her, and came to understand his own doom quickly after, feeling as though Arwen seemed not much older than he was. Elrond would tell him of the differences between the man and the elf maiden, the differences in their greatness and fates in the world. This spurred Aragorn to go forth into the world himself, and so it is told in the tale of Aragorn and Arwen, of which I go into more depth in a separate video, that he became the hardiest of living men during his time in the wild. Many years would pass, but Arwen would behold Aragorn once again, for they happened to be in Lothlorien in 2980. And there Arwen saw him, more like an elf lord from the west than any man, for he was in clothing given to him by the elves of Lorien. And it was in this hour that Arwen knew her choice, and her doom was appointed. She came to share the love Aragorn already had for her. Together, upon the hill of Kirin Amroth and Lorien, Aragorn and Arwen both renounced the shadow, and Arwen had hope that her love, whom she still called Estelle, meaning hope, would aid in the fall of this shadow. But to be together, Arwen would also have to renounce the twilight of the west, not just the darkness of the east. 
And so she did this, for though she loved her father Elrond, and her mother Celebrian, and the rest of her kin, her place was in mortal lands, the lands of Middle-earth, with the mortal she had loved. Thus she gave up her place in the West, and her immortality, and she would cleave herself to Aragorn. They were engaged, and Aragorn gave Arwen the Ring of Barahir. Elrond would soon learn of this, and though he was aggrieved to know Arwen would not go with him into the West, he demanded that she would not diminish her grace for any other than the king of both Gondor and Arnor. Aragorn still had much to do, but he had both a greater destiny and a greater reason before him than ever he had had in the past. Arwen would come to return to Rivendell, and always thought of her love who was abroad. She began to weave a banner, the livery of Elendil, a standard that should be flown when the king of Gondor and Arnor pronounced himself. She made this from black cloth with mithril, gems, and gold, depicting the symbol of the king, a white tree with seven stars and a crown. Arwen would see her beloved from time to time, but once again in late 3018, when her betrothed came to Rivendell, with four hobbits and the one ring out of the wild. They would spend time together during the feast and in the Hall of Fire, and Frodo noticed this. Eventually, the Fellowship departed Rivendell, and all of Arwen's hope went with Aragorn, who would later come to Lothlorien and be given the Elisar Stone from Galadriel, as a gift from the bride's family to the groom. The stone became symbolic of Aragorn himself, who was to be a healer, and whose kingly name would in fact be Elisar, after this stone. In 3019, Arwen gave the standard she had wrought to the rangers and her brother, who formed the Grey Company, to go forth and aid Aragorn. Halbarad bore this banner for his friend and lord, and spoke to Aragorn words from Arwen, that the time for their hopes had come, or the time for their hopes had ended. Although Arwen was not physically there, her presence still inspired Aragorn, even at times when hope seemed lost, and ruin seemed all but certain. I have a video talking about how Arwen could have been used in the Legendarium more, and it actually has to do with this particular moment in the story, so please check that out if you're interested. I do think she could have played a larger role in the story, especially since she paralleled Luthien so heavily, and Luthien had played a large role in her own story. And it actually could have led to some interesting interactions, particularly between Arwen and Eowyn. However, I also understand and appreciate her role in the story as it is. But in the end, of course, Aragorn, Frodo, and the others had victory, and Aragorn would be pronounced the king of Arnor and Gondor. This requirement for marriage set for him by Elrond was fulfilled. And so, on the day of Aragorn's coronation, Arwen, Elrond, and some others from Rivendell made the journey towards Gondor, coming through Lothlorien to Edoras, and then finally on to Minas Tirith. On Mid-Year's Day, Arwen and Aragorn were finally wed. Their long plans finally came to their fulfillment. Arwen's fate was set, and she and Elrond would have a painful parting. She would gift Frodo her passage to the uttermost west in her stead, and she also gave him a white necklace to help him when the scars and memory of his peril and the One Ring came to him. Not only was Arwen married to Aragorn, but she was also married to King Elisar. Thus, this half-elf became the queen of the Dúnedain, the men of Gondor and Arnor, who accepted her with love and reverence, as well as the queen of her own people who remained in this Middle-earth. She would be good friends with all of Aragorn's allies, coming to name Eleanor, the daughter of Sam Gamgee, as one of her maids of honor. She bore Eldarion, her son and Aragorn's heir, and several daughters. With her husband, Arwen helped secure a peaceful and good beginning of the Fourth Age of the World for all free peoples, yet, in the end, she would have to endure much pain, for the cost of mortality is brutal. She would be there in Aragorn's final moments, and knew that she could not escape her fate either, for there was no ship left that could bear her yet. And so... In 121 of the Fourth Age, she came back to Lothlorien and Kirin Amroth with those that were left of her kin, leaving behind her son to rule Gondor. And there, where Arwen had once bound herself to Aragorn and to this fate, she passed away and was buried. She passed away at the age of 2,901 years old. Though her end is tragic, she at least followed Aragorn beyond the circles of this world, and was not restrained to Arda away from him. Arwen was one of the last reminders and depictions of the elven beauty of old, yet some of her grace still lived on in the bloodline of the kings. And so we come to the end of our tale on Arwen Undomiel, the even star. From this tale we see that, though the time with those whom we love may not last forever, 
It is still one of the most beautiful and worthwhile things in life all the same. It is worth sacrificing for. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on Arwen? Let me know in the comments below. In my mind, Arwen is such an amazing character, and as I have said before, I wish we got more lore and story about her, for she is quite important to the overall story and the characters within. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Kyle Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, Daniel Burns, Anthony Harmon, Dorwin Gray, Arthur, and Merlin. Thank you all so much, and thanks to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a video on the history of the One Ring itself. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.